introduce Ken, who is one of the experts on carousel horses and has some on display here that are really an example of what you should know. We're at an antique show, and these are all for sale. So, Ken, tell them what you know. Okay. Uh, carousel, serious carousel collecting started in the late 60s and early 70s. And uh, at that time, carousels were not appreciated at all. Uh, many of them were just bulldozed. But as we got up into the 80s, the prices escalated significantly through the early 90s where carousel horses, many of them sold in the $100,000 to $200,000 range. Uh, in the early 90s, like everything else, including the racehorse market, uh, carousel horses declined in value except for the very best of carousel horses, which have always maintained their prices. So... Where are they now, I guess, is the way. Well, well, we'll see on the ones you have here. Let's look at your horses and see what we have that's good. Uh, the first one is a German horse uh, by Frederick Hein, carved in the early 1900s. Uh, European horses typically don't uh, have the value of American horses. But they're very pretty and I think probably the best, best value in carousel horses. Uh, this one is $2,500 and it, all the woodwork has been done and it's in primer ready for someone to take it on as a painting project. Uh, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it white. It looks very deco. Yeah, a lot of people do. Uh, they want it that way because it looks more like a fine art carving, which carousel horses are. Some of the carousel uh, carvers were professional, were uh, academically trained, like Daniel Muller at the uh, Academy of Fine Arts in Philadelphia, and his sculptures are in museums throughout the world. Do they sign them? Uh, the carousel horses are rarely signed. Uh, some of them by Philadelphia Toboggan Company on their side trappings, that the carvings on the side will have PTC on. Uh, Ilians and Loof sometimes sign some of their horses, but very few are signed. Uh, you kind of have to uh, identify them by what you by your knowledge. But I've been studying those for a long time, and it's I, it works pretty well. And if they're hearing anything. It doesn't bother the, t the recordings because we've been there before. Oh, okay. Go ahead. But I couldn't hear you. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll, I'll yeah. get you again because that's one thing about being in a flea market or a, or a show. There's always something going on that interferes with taping, so everybody will understand. What's the second one here? Uh, the second one is a, a Denzel carved in the early 1900s. That's called a prancer because his front legs are off the ground and the rear legs are on the ground. Uh, Denzel was probably no, one of the no. best known of the uh, American carvers and Daniel Muller who was the best uh, he carved for Denzel on and off. Uh, that one is restored to look like old paint which the majority of people kind of like and uh, folk art collectors like the old look. Which okay. is pretty much shown in the next horse, which is a Charles Dare, about 1890, uh, carved in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, his. This is a one that has that is in uh, original paint, what's left of it, and uh, this is the way most true folk art people like it. Well, Old that, and that, grungy. That's the way I that mine is, and I like it that way. I didn't want to ever ever do anything to it. I wonder if they took off some top layers, but at least you're down to the bottom one, so it's yeah. okay. Uh, that's what we do in our, and we try to do in our restorations, uh, to get down to the original paint, because, and the value of a horse in original paint far exceeds a restored horse. How much is this one? Uh, $7,500. Okay, well that's wonderful. Thank you.